It's different. So if you've been in the clinic or like shadowed anybody, it's different from an injected bolus. So injected bolus refers to some sort of dose. And the GI tract and digestion, we're talking about that mashed up food and saliva. Okay, deglutition, fancy word. Just like ventil pulmonary ventilation, fancy word for breathing, deglutition is a fancy medical term for swallowing. So then you have different phases, the buccal phase. So if you remember your anatomical landmark, where is your buccal area? Your cheeks, right? And then you have the pharyngeal phase, you should know what your pharynx is. Esophageal phase, again, that tube after your pharynx, and then you enter the stomach. So if you have something, um, maybe not liquid, and if you want to do this demonstration at home, don't do it over your keyboard. But if you have something to eat and something small, don't choke at home. Again, I want you all healthy and safe, but you can do this demonstration. So there are different things you need to do in dec deglutition. So notice that in the buccal phase, the tongue needs to push against the hard palate and the soft palate is closed. Now, if you have food, try putting that food in your mouth and chewing it. Don't swallow it yet. So chew it enough so that you won't choke, all right? Don't swallow it yet. Now, without, and I don't think, if you can't, if you don't think you can do this without coughing up all over your keyboard or your furniture, please don't do it, just swallow your food. But, okay, for those of you who think you can do it, try to swallow, but keep your tongue pressed to the bottom of your mouth, I guess. So try to swallow without closing your mouth and keep, or you can try to close your mouth, but try to keep swallow while keeping your tongue press down. Can you do it? You're probably having a hard time doing it right now, right? So the thing is that this part is very important. Why? It's helping to seal this part right here so that you're actually able to, again, open up and actually create that vacuum that helps to move things down from your mouth oral cavity and your pharynx down into your esophagus. So this part about your tongue actually pushing up against the roof of your mouth. So this is sometimes like, say your grandma or grandpa is having a hard time swallowing, maybe encourage them to try to put, help to seal up their oral cavity and push your tongue against the roof of their mouth so they can actually help instead of having your food go forward and just idle there. Yep. Yeah, so again, ooh, okay. Yeah, so the, it's already difficult without actual food. Yeah, so, but if you do it with your tongue depressed, really hard to do, right? Yeah, so again, do it when you have food. Try to swallow, but keep your tongue on the floor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, I hope you're all right. Yeah, so. Uh, maybe do some throat exercises or, <laughs> or be mindful about all your throat muscles trying to help. All right, so then once this bolus enters your pharynx and your esophagus, so this is a, undergoes a process called peristalsis. So what's peristalsis? And again, if you have another class and you need to leave early, by all means, yeah, this will be up on YouTube. So the pharynx contracts. So again, why is it contracting? So the thing is that contracting, what does that do to the pressure inside a tube? And this is a tube. Contracting increases pressure, right? So again, if the pressure increases in the pharynx, where the high pressure here, less pressure here, where does the food go? It goes from high to low. So this pharyngeal contraction is important in moving the bolus from your pharynx down into your esophagus. Now your esophagus is, is also a tube. It has multiple layers here. So the inner layer, most layer is, is the mucosa. Then you have the, this is kind of a tricky thing. You think like, okay, below the mucosa is the submucosa, but if you're, depending where you're looking at, I like to think of it, you're looking from this layer down, because it's like, wait, it's outer, but it's below, and like, uh, I know, it's confusing. Then you have the muscularis externa. So this is a big hint as to what the, how the esophagus moves food. It is muscular. It has all these muscles along its length, and then you have a surrounding tissue co covering called the adventitia. So this is the outermost layer. So can you eat while hanging upside down? So if they couldn't eat while hanging upside down, and if you need gravity for everything, astronauts would starve. So this is how you're able to eat while upside down. So the thing is that esophagus is somehow manages to be a one-way street. 
How does it manage to be a one-way street? Well, does this process called peristalsis. So peristalsis, what we have here is a bolus, and it's moving, what you have is that, again, that muscularis externa is contracting, and remember, things move from high to low pressure. So by moving, contracting, you're able to actually force this bolus by one kind of moving around physically and applying the pressure. So it's like, it's involuntary. The thing about this peristalsis process, it happens whether you want it or not. If you have something that enters the esophagus, just by reflexes by itself, your esophagus is actually able to accomplish this by itself. So it's not going to be like, okay, I'm going to swallow this, but I want to stop midway. You can't. The esophagus and peristalsis is involuntary. So it's wave-like contractions. Again, it's moving this. This little bolus is surfing along the waves of peristalsis. It's kind of like squeezing toothpaste from one end of the tube to the other. How do you do that? Well, again, you're going to apply pressure along the way if you want to be efficient. You're still applying pressure if you're doing the roll-up technique. So again, you're applying pressure and moving this stuff from high to low pressure, moving it out through this end right here. So same with peristalsis. So I'll have a link to this layer. The again, autonomic this nervous video, system controls here. contractions so of the alimentary nervous canal system that move swallowed food down the esophagus churn the stomach, so have here is and the move chyme through the small intestine and large intestine. The alimentary canal is a single, continuous tube that includes the oral cavity, esophagus, stomach, and intestines. The tissue layers that form the wall are stalsis. Okay, I think that showed it already. Alright, so then finally we enter the stomach. So I think this is a good part. So you have the lower esophageal sphincter. And again, sphincter is a ring of muscle. So this is the portal that you links the esophagus right here with the stomach. And now this bolus finally enters the stomach. And I think I'll leave the stomach for next week, Monday. All right.